Hello and welcome to another video. Today is Arc Genesis Part 2, Everything There Is. And make sure to let us like and subscribe to gain knowledge because knowledge is good and you can get more of these videos as well as my other videos. Also, I'm a little late to this, but I'm doing this because I got the DLC for my birthday a couple days ago. Biomes. There are three main biomes in Genesis Part 2. The first one is called the Eden, which is similar to the island or any other of the free DLC maps. So this is the Eden on the top. There are lots of rivers, lakes, forests, there are mountains. And takes up about half of the map. Well, half of the half of the map. The second, Rockwell's Garden, is a place taken over by the now huge Rockwell and is mainly corrupted and extremely dangerous. Uh, this one is Rockwell's Garden at the bottom. This is where all a lot of the new creatures spawn. The third one is called the Void and is similar to the space biome in Genesis Part 1 basically just a black void exactly what you would expect from it engrams structures and vehicles the structures and vehicles in the steel sea are almost game-changing to say the least and are essential for survival on the ship the first structure is the incubator which can keep your eggs warm so this is the incubator at the bottom as you can see, there are different temperatures for the different eggs. So this one is a Magmasaur. I think this one's a Fire Wyvern. And if an Electric Wyvern. So they're all very different temperatures. The second structure is the ammo box, which supplies ammo to nearby turrets if you put the ammo inside of the turret. Not the, not the turret, the box. There is also the loadout mannequin, which is used for target practice, and the canoe, which is a small boat you can place onto the water. Like a canoe. Engrams, weapons. There are three non-tech weapons on Genesis Part 2 that have very different roles. The first one is the Pitch Jar, which is used to set things on fire if you fire it from a catapult or a ballista. The second is the Minigun, which fires bolts very fast but heats up very quickly. The third and final weapon is the Net Projectile which is fired from a harpoon and can immobilize larger creatures like Ebola. Engrams. Tech. Like a lot of other items, Genesis Part 2 gives us a few tech items that are variants of normal items, such as the tech bow, tech phase pistol, and the tech crop plot. There are two unique items, however, that are completely unique to the game. The first one is the tech surveillance console which can view footage from the tech surveillance cameras that you can place all over the map. The other is the tech hover sail, which is like a sailboat, but obviously made out of tech and can also fly around the map. Here, I think it's just running away from a griffin, but I don't know if the wall does anything. Creatures, the Maywing. When the Maywing was first introduced, I thought it would be this tiny little platypus thing that would run off with your baby creatures. But now that Genesis dropped, it's huge and even has a saddle. This creature is a beginning creature to tame, as it takes basic kibble at level 150 and only takes 10 minutes. It can also glide and steal your baby dinos, and when tamed, can carry them, such as in this art carrying an Argentavis, a raptor, and a dodo, as well as a human. Creatures, the Strider. As a tech creature, the Strider is 
the ultimate creature spawning commonly in the Eden Zone and less commonly in Rockwell's Garden. To tame it, you must passively feed it mutage to hack into it. Once tamed, however, the Strider has a pa- platform saddle, although smaller than any other platform saddle, that has a sleeping pod on it and autom- and it automatically on it automatically and also can put eight different rigs for different needs such as the excavation rig for rocks and stuff and the the shield rig to shield you and the strider from nearby attacks i believe this one's the shield one and i believe this one is the excavator one creatures the noglin the noggin <laughs> the Noglin is a tiny creature rarely found in the Rockwell's Garden region. To tame it, you must sacrifice creatures like the Trodon. You can tame it like the Trodon. You... The bigger the creature, the better. Once tamed, the Noglin can ride of, of your shoulders and can control the minds of creatures as big as a rex and either kills them or knocks them out. Creatures, the Shadow Mane. The Shadow Mane is a large lion-like creature that is extremely powerful in both raw stats, but also in abilities. These creatures usually go in small packs of two members in the Rockwell's Garden region. Abnormally, the Shadow Mane is a passive tame with fish baskets, which depends on the size of the fish. Quelicanthus is the worst, salmon is the best. They can also turn invisible, much like the Rock Drake, and teleport to your location if you're running away from them. Essentially, don't wake up the shadow mane when it's sleeping. Creatures, the Astrodelphus. The Astrodelphus is a flying creature from the space biome and is actually quite common, even though it's huge. It's also a late game creature that settle is unlocked at level 120 and is made of tech. The Astrodelphus in the back is what the saddle looks like on it. Creatures, the Void Worm. I also did a video on the Void Worm a while back, so make sure to check that up. Check, check, check it up <laughs> by using the eye in the corner or in the link in the description. Although the Void Worm acts like any other wyvern, it's completely different when it comes to taming. With normal wyverns, you must steal an egg in order to start feeding it wyvern. With the void worm, however, you need to feed it mut- mutagel like the strider. Once tamed, it works like any other wyvern, although the babies feed on meat rather than wyvern milk. Creatures, the axomac. This is a type of mech that is mainly used for utility and not combat, like the regular mech. You'll need to build this robot like the mech and mega mech instead of taming it like Tech Dinos or the Strider. Bosses, the Summoner. This is likely a mini-boss, although I have not faced it yet, that, like its name says, summons, like, that like it, that like its name says, summons smaller creatures. When the Summoner is defeated, all of its minions are killed as well. And that's just going to be it for this video. If you liked it, subscribe and like.